So hello everybody and we're going to be talking about this enhanced threat that is going to be tomorrow, so Wednesday the 20th, and basically what all to expect with it. And so it's going to go from really Wednesday morning to Thursday morning is where in these areas we're going to see our threat. So we're going to go ahead and pop actually closer in so we can have that overall regional look. And what's weird about this entire region is we don't really have any of those regionals actually out there. So as we pop back, we just get the edge, and that's something that we don't see too often. But luckily in this, we can get kind of side angle view. I guess we do get all of it in this view. So it's going to be right here along Montana and Wyoming, traveling down along the borders of Nebraska and South Dakota. So we do see that slight threat that's going to form all the way down through here. And then we do have that small area of enhanced. Now that is probably likely to get expanded. Uh, we haven't seen it yet, but it could go that way. Or potentially looking at it, it could flush further south. So we're going to go ahead and look at our day two tornado. And we do have that 2% all through here. So tornado, not the biggest threat, but they are expecting hail. So we could see 30% hail, and it would not surprise me if we see the significant hatched eventually get put on this. But our biggest players are going to be hail, and then it looks like wind. Um, that wind and that enhance is going to be right in here. Uh, but really, it looks like hail is our big threat, and then we do have a small tornado chance. And so we do see tornadoes in that 2% range, so that is a possibility. So going ahead and flipping it back to this, that is your enhance, so just keep that in mind. But we're going to look down and see what it's talking about and what we can expect. So there's an enhanced risk, obviously. Uh, basically, thunderstorms, uh, severe thunderstorms are likely late Wednesday afternoon and evening across parts of eastern Wyoming and Montana, in the western Nebraska and the Dakotas, posing a risk for large hail, strong wind gusts, and perhaps a couple of tornadoes. So biggest threats are going to be hail, and we could see a, some strong wind gusts with those. Generally, when you have hail, you're going to have strong wind gusts, um, and then there is that chance for tornadoes. That would not surprise me if we get an upgrade to a 5% at least in that area for tornadoes, but overall, what we are expecting is potentials uh, for a e late evening and overnight uh max intensification and so we are going to see these thunderstorms in the afternoon and evening uh, could be severe and then we're going to see those improve throughout the day so we're going to focus on what's happening uh, in the afternoon on so I want to show you the temperatures for that time and we'll look uh, we'll go to 21 Z tomorrow and we will see what we are expecting temperature wise so just to put that put this picture back in your mind we are seeing the enhanced threat right in here so when we see temperatures on the back side in the 80s we do see a line really here of influential uh, heating that can allow for that daytime convection we also do have cold air back some colder air it's not cold but cooler air that is back here that's going to allow uh, basically all of this warm air to be used up and allow big time storm convection somewhere right along this line and that is why we have that enhanced threat right in there so looking at our wind what you can expect in through here we do have this so it's not going to be in the 925 because this is actually a higher up environment where we could see this so we're going to actually have to go up to about 700 millibars to see what the wind is at at this higher level so not surprising we are seeing winds um, probably around 30 to 40 mile per hour at this time uh, looking a little bit further into the evening we are going to see some almost 50 60 knot winds uh, or some 45 to 50 knot winds which means 50 to 60 mile per hour winds in there so uh, overall though we are expecting the damaging winds to come out of certain cells so it's more likely we're going to see wind speeds roughly about 45 mile per hour with these systems could gust higher than that at times and looking overnight we do get up into the 50 knots area around 11 p.m. and then 
as we keep going in the morning hours, we will see uh, just some heavier winds coming in behind the system. So not huge squall line looking winds as of right now at the 700 millibar height. Now if we look back to that similar time uh, at the 21Z, it's a lot it's a lot ca calmer winds in a way. We're not seeing the bigger uh, wind fields produce at ground level. As you can see here, it's like 30, 40 knots. So it's about uh, close to 50 mile per hour somewhere in there. So we are not expecting anything huge wind wise. So we're not going to see a big squall line form like that at least based on the winds. And a big key feature with this is, as you can see, there is these gray boxes that are forming all the way down through here. And so what this actually is are the mountains and at the altitude. So the only area that stuff could fill in is down in here, and it's cut off immediately, and the enhanced threat comes right in through here. So the fact that we have this in a high terrain means that we're probably going to see our most severe stuff Anywhere where the scribbles are, anywhere in here, is where we could expect them just purely because of altitude. Then these are mountainous terrain regions. So let's go ahead and look and see what we're seeing in the most unstable cape for this afternoon time. And we're going to go ahead and go back to that 21Z. We might even pop back to the 18 just to show you what we're expecting. So some lower levels of cape, but for this area, the plains, the high plains, it is a higher level of cape than what we would consider uh, normal for just some general thunderstorms. So we will see the numbers up in the 2000s, which is right in here. Uh, tornadoes definitely occur. We've seen tornadoes this month already occur as low as 1,000, and we've seen them obviously occur as high as 6,000. So that is a lot of range to cover there, so that there definitely is that chance. So really in here, we're going to see close to 3,000 cape uh, in this area, and they are showing that there is this potential for tornadoes. Uh, it's going to be lower end of that scan. But as we see, the most intense times are really going to be, uh, it looks like as close to 8 p.m., so this would be 7 p.m. Central Time. Uh, so like that would be 6 p.m. Rocky Mountain time if you are on that. Uh, so basically, we are seeing this right about dinner time. And then as we see going into the later evening hours, it kind of dies off. So we do see an uptick uh, right around dinner time in that evening hours right in through here. And we'll check and see what our photographs say. They are still saying the same thing. And it's not really looking like it's going to be a capped environment. There is a significant chance of supercells. There is a chance of weak ones too and then there obviously there could not be. But according to our SARS we could see up to 60% chances of tornadoes and then we're going to see a 75% chance of hail. So that is a 6 out of 10 tornado chance. And that is, once again, showing you where that scan region was taken. That was right in here. And so our enhanced threat, since it considers all of this, we could see these two areas having the highest chance. So looking down at the surface, we are seeing that good, well-defined cape at all levels. And what we're seeing at the convective inhibition, uh, out in front of this, we are seeing a lot. Uh, it's basically a wall. So it is a kind of a dry line that forms. Uh, in a way as allowing all these storms to form right behind it. And if we pop it back just a few hours, we see that it stays pretty much about the same, but all these storms could be able to generate and stay right behind this. So supercell wise, what are we expecting for supercells? So it seems to be as of right now that our NAM CONUS is favoring this Nebraska portion of the enhanced threat. We see that 11, we do see another peak up here. Uh, supercells and da damaging storms are not always going to be exactly the same. Uh, we aren't going to see, if we see low supercells, doesn't mean we won't get dangering, uh, dangerous storms. But this is definitely uh, hinting at the fact that we are going to see a lot stronger storm systems occurring definitely around dinner time. But our biggest thing storm-wise, what we could see uh, is probably going to be between uh, 5 
p.m. Eastern time, so that is going to be uh, closer to two or, th or three or four p.m. Central or local time there, and then it is going to be between that and dinner time, uh, Eastern time. So that means that means really uh, we could expect it the dinner time hours within this area. So we are going to see at 16, and so that is showing us in this area with an elevated threat where there could potentially be a non-tornadic, but most likely with that marginal threat. Um, in this exact location, we have a 75% chance of tornadoes, and then we are expecting 73% chance of significant hail. So definitely looking at Nebraska for that, just because looking at these scans, we are seeing that when we're seeing these upper 70s for the percentages of tornadoes, we could expect these big time systems to form. And we are seeing that same thing, and it is agreeing on... Uh, Right in here is where we are agreeing with that. So parts of Colorado and Nebraska, um, maybe the very eastern part of Wyoming, is where you can expect that. So checking out that exact scan of the Torcon, this is going to be our highest threat in there, so that's a 70%. So realistically, we have a 7 out of 10 chance of a tornado in this region down here. So not much else other than that. I mean, obviously up in here, there is a small chance but looking at everything that is going on with this system, it seems to be one of those weird circumstances where that little area down in there is just in the right spot where we could see these systems go ahead and take off and form and allow for some potential tornadic activity. So this enhanced threat does go all the way up into here. Uh, overall, we are going to call this area down in here the most severe. So if you live anywhere basically in, uh, we're going to go ahead and count south that very southern tip of South Dakota and then into parts of Wyoming and then all the way back up in Nebraska. Right in there is where you can expect those uh, most dangerous storms as of this afternoon where well, we're seeing that. And then in that in the shaded region here is where you can expect the highest tornadic activity to occur. And remember, this is going to be around dinner time. So we're going to say 5 to 8 p.m. is our time for that. And that is going to be local time. So basically, I would pay attention to the news in this area. But just be ready. And then these storms will die off in closer to this area so they only have this much space to work with so that we're not going to see these super long track tornadoes if we do see any they're going to be little tiny ones somewhere in in here probably so that expect that and remember to stay weather ready with this whole event know your safe locations in this and this is a weird spot but it is not uncommon and these are the northern high plains so we do see tornadoes especially up in here so the fact that we are seeing them down in this location is indicative of a severe storm environment for this tornado alley. So I would definitely be paying attention. Stay safe. We hope to see you for our forecasts and remember to stay weather ready.